she has said. Because the first time I stumbled over this passage, Genesis 14, 14, I used to make reference to this when I'm talking about relationship. To train the people under you is very important. And I pray that people under us as we are training, we will not we receive training. Amen. And it's one thing to train is another thing to receive. Because there is always a future that nobody will be able to handle alone. Even the one that is being trained will not be able to handle it alone. And they can call on his fellow trainees. And they can call them, those who are trained along with them, can call them to come and help. We have learned about David in the, in the, in the cave of Abdul Abdul Lam. When he, the vagabond came to uh, stay with him, and then um, he needed water in the midst of the war. The, when the people went to fetch the water, even though he didn't take the water, he poured it for God. At the same time, you can see loyalty. This is telling us in the household of God, and even among our relatives, we should have people we be trained, not training as such, going to school. It may be part of it. But home training, and I believe this one is training in the for, for war. If he has not trained them for war, he will not be able to bring them out and rely on them that they should pursue the, them unto them. And like my sister said that uh, <laughs> There must be strategy, I wrote it down here. If God is not guiding you, you cannot strategize. Everything depends on God's guidance. And I pray that everything we are learning, we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us when it comes to any issue of our lives, so that we know how to handle this. And then, uh, the Bible tells us we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Brother to brother, sister to brother, brother to sister. They are not beloved in the family. You don't just close your eyes. You know, ordinary helping, helping somebody to take it, you know, helping to pack some things. It's something good that we should do. We should not show any nonchalant attitude when it comes to helping another person. I pray that our heart will not be closed against doing good. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are looking at Genesis chapter 14 from verse 8 to 16. I want to add some, maybe seven quick points, each one I will give you as a skeleton and expect that the rich people will have flesh. Point number one, don't go to Sodom. Um, Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12. Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, there's a way that seems right to man. The end thereof is death. When Lot was choosing, when he, when he saw uh, all the planes leading to Sodom and Gomorrah, everything was beautiful. And now we see that uh, when trouble came, it was one of those people carried away by the enemy. Yeah, we know his brother came, or his uncle came to rescue him. But uh, you need to put yourself in his shoes and know the days of fear, the days of uncertainty, as a prisoner of war, as he was being taken away with his wife and uh, and all his goods and children. Number two, 
choices have repercussions. Choices have repercussions. Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 19 to 20. Deuteronomy 30 from verse 19 to 20. God says, I'm calling heaven and earth to be witness to you people. That to have a choice. A choice between blessing and curses, between death and life. But then God gave advice. He said, choose life that you and your seed may live. When you choose, it's not you alone that will be affected by the choice. When the enemy came to take Lot into uh, captivity, they didn't leave the children alone. Be careful in making your choices. I pray you will choose right in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Point number three. When your relative is uh, doing wrong things, making wrong choices, warn them. Warn them because uh, you know, when trouble comes, they won't be the only one to suffer. And this is particularly true of your children. Make sure if your child is going the wrong way, you want the child. Proverbs 29 verse 15, Proverbs 29 verse 15 tells us that a child left to himself brings shame. Even if all you suffer, as a result of not uh, correcting your children in shame. Shame is a terrible thing to suffer. My prayer is that none of us will ever have cause to suffer shame in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The next important point, of course, is that in the time of peace, prepare for war. There were no wars when Abraham was training his servants. There was no trace of uh, war. Um, and as a matter of fact, if you study the story of Abraham all the way through, those servants never had to fight another war. And they were trained. They were ready. If they were not trained, they won't be ready. In time of peace, prepare for war. Ephesians 6 verse 13. Ephesians 6 13 says, We are to put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand in the evil day. Be ready. It wasn't the day that David faced Goliath that he began to learn how to use his sling. If it was that day that he was not practicing, uh, he would be dead. But he's been practicing how to use his sling long before he had to really use it to kill a giant. In time of peace, prepare for war. Some people wonder why do we keep fasting again and again and again? Particularly when all seems to be going well. When all is going well, that's even the more time that you should prepare. Uh, remember some years ago that I called out the, the church on, I think, for a hundred day fast. Uh, it wasn't long after that that there was crisis in the city, in the, in the nation. And the people from the east were running to the east. The people from the uh, north were afraid of being in the south, etc., etc. I told my children, then relax, nothing is going to happen to you because you have already prepared. Mm. You've paid the price. Uh, those who didn't fast when we were fasting, they fasted in those days because there was tremendous fear. 
international. In the time of peace, prepare for war. You don't learn how to pray when you face a crisis. You learn to pray when there's no crisis at all uh, on your horizon. Number five that we need to learn is that when you want to go to war or when you want to fight, do it with wisdom. Proverbs 24 verse 6, Proverbs 24 verse 6 says, By wise counsel make thy war. Uh, Abraham divided his team in facing this army. So that, uh, you know, during in those days when you are fighting, there's a lot of shouting. So the enemy are hearing some shouts from the right, some shouts from the left, some shouts. They probably thought that the, uh, the army that came against them is much bigger than the little people that uh, Abraham had with him. With wise cancer, make thy war. Sixth thing that we need to learn here is that Abraham didn't fight these people by day, he fought them by night. Learn to fight by night. When we do night vigils, we are doing warfare. In Matthew 26 verse 41, Matthew 26 verse 41, it was at night when the Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, watch and pray. That they were, they preferred to sleep. And you know the result. In Acts 16 from verse 25 to 26, Acts 16, 25 to 26, you wonder why did Paul and Silas wait till midnight before they began to pray and to sing praises unto God. Because almost invariably, the demons, etc., etc., they hold their own meetings too at night. Learn to pray, to do warfare by night. The seventh point, which is the last one, which might not be obvious to you in this uh, story is that after Lot was rescued, he went back to Sodom to live. You know the story. After, uh, I mean, when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and he visited Abraham in Genesis 18, and uh, the angels proceeded to uh, Sodom in Genesis 19. Who did they meet at the gate? Lot. You made the wrong choice before. He led you to trouble. God rescued you. If I were Lot, I would say, Uncle, <laughs> whatever you have to do, you have to do. I'm not going back to the Sodom. I'm going to stay with you where yeah, I am safe. But you know the end result? He went back to Sodom. When the angels came to grab him, he couldn't take anything with him. He was led out quickly. So everything he gained in Sodom, he lost in one day. He lost his wife also that day. And it wasn't long after that that he lost his his heritage, because uh, his daughter slept with him to produce cursed children. Proverbs 29 verse 1, Proverbs 29 verse 1 says, The one who is often reproved of hardness his neck shall perish suddenly, mm -hmm. and that without repentance. Be careful. 
if you have made a wrong choice, God has corrected you and has delivered you, don't make that second choice, a wrong choice, the second time. There are those who will want to tell you the story of the prodigal son. That when the prodigal son left home, he came back and his father received him. And they said that one to give you the impression that if you backslide, God will receive you again, which is correct. The question I have always asked them is this How many times did the prodigal son leave home? He left only once. So if he had gone back the second time, he would not have returned. So if you think that the story of the prodigal son would be an excuse for falling into sin again and again, you are deceiving yourself. Because if the devil got him the second time, he won't let him go. My prayer is that if we have made any wrong choice, the Almighty God in His infinite mercy will correct us today Amen. and deliver us from the repercussions of wrong choices. Amen. Then give us the grace never again to make the same mistake twice. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. Amen.